Hello, welcome to Carmelite Conversations. This is Frances Harry, your hostess. I hope your Advent season is full of prayer as you prepare for the infant Jesus' birth. I have a special treat for you. It's the latest homily by Deacon Rusty Baldwin, given to our secular order of Discast Carmelites in Dayton, Ohio. He himself is a member of that community. The talk, uh, the homily, is entitled, The Language of God. May these words inspire you and draw you ever deeper into the love of God. If you are enjoying Deacon Baldwin's reflections on the podcast that we post, you may want to consider one of his books. They're in a series called From the Heart, and they may be found at Amazon.com. Without further ado... Here's Deacon Rusty Baldwin. God bless you. How often is it that we wish we could hear God more clearly? That we could speak to him as we speak to one another? This is not a desire that only Carmelites have. It's a primordial desire that every member of the human race has, all mankind. It's the way God made us. We are restless until we rest in thee, as St. Augustine said. God made us to be in communion with him. Some suppress this desire almost to the point of eliminating it, but however small, it is there nonetheless. But even though this desire is present, God nevertheless doesn't ordinarily speak to us as we speak to one another. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord, God said through the prophet Isaiah. But God does in fact speak to us in many and varied ways. But today I thought I would speak a bit about how God speaks to us most often, that being in silence. Jesus himself gives us the most compelling example and argument for God speaking in silence. Where did our Lord go to pray? To the mountain, the desert, to isolated and quiet places. He told us to go to our inner room. And when did Jesus pray? When the need to spend time with God was most urgent or grave, Jesus prayed in the middle of the night or in the early hours of the morning, the quietest times possible. Our Lord often spent all night in prayer. And moreover, he sacrificed all other aspects of his ministry to do so, neither healing teaching, nor all the many other facets of his ministry on earth took priority over his time with God. Jesus indeed left us an example to follow. But this immediately raises several issues, doesn't it? Not the least of which is we live in a noisy world, a noisy world that is getting ever louder. A world that is determined to fill our minds with images, sounds, and distractions every waking moment. A superficial assessment of this dominant characteristic of our age might reasonably conclude that commercial, technological, political, and ideological forces are running amok. They are each trying to outshout the other for their own ends, whether that be power, money, or manipulation. And who can deny this is occurring? However, I think there is also a more insidious and malevolent force at work, one that simultaneously hates and is terrified by silence, one that wants to keep us from silence because he knows, as we do, That in silence, we meet God. In silence, we encounter God. But the truth is even more profound. The truth is even more sublime than that. 
The truth has to do with the very language of God. But just what is the language of God? The truth of the matter is, we don't just meet God in silence, but rather, silence is the language of God. Silence is the language of God. You see, authentic silence, true silence, isn't an absence. It is the divine presence. Before creation, from all eternity, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit communed in silence. And to us, God has spoken but a single word, the word incarnate, his only begotten Son. What else then is there for him to say that he has not said in our Lord? And thus, henceforth, it is in silence that God speaks to us. But this seems utterly fantastic, does it not? The Father General of the Carthusian Order, an order of contemplative monks who spends their lives in silence, Dismas de la Sus has said, Everything in our relation with God is a paradox. The realities that are opposed in man are combined in him. Presence and absence overlap. Voiceless speech or silent communication. These expressions underscore how ever mysterious reality of the encounter with God. How could it be otherwise? When the infinite meets the finite, the meeting does not fit into our usual frameworks. So when we think God is ignoring us, when we think he is far away, it is actually then he is closest to us. He speaks to us most especially when we are in pain, in our sickness, and in our hurt, trials, and tribulations. But the language he speaks to us in is silence. We see this paradox in the very incarnation of God, in that one word he spoke. When our Lord came to earth and we could see him with our own eyes, his divinity was hidden, veiled by his humanity. This is true generally. When God manifests himself to our senses, his divinity is veiled, not absent, but hidden, obscured. We experience this most profoundly in the most holy Eucharist, we see with our eyes bread and wine, but veiled beneath these appearances is God himself. So too in all the other sacraments. Robert Cardinal Seurat, the prefect of the Congregation for Divine Worship in the Discipline of the Sacraments, explains, if we observe the great works, the most powerful acts, the most extraordinary and striking interior transformations that God carries out in man, we are forced to admit that he works in silence. Baptism brings about a marvelous creation in the soul of the infant or the adult who receives this sacrament. We hear the words of the priest. We saw the water flow on the infant's forehead, yet we perceived nothing of this immersion into the inner life of the Trinity, grace, and creation, which requires nothing less than the personal, almighty action of God. God has uttered his word in the soul in silence. In that same silent darkness, the subsequent developments of grace generally come. Do you see what follows from the Cardinal's observations? When our senses are not operative, when our senses are deprived, as it were, of their proper natural material objects, when we enter into silence, that lifts the veil so that our spiritual senses can be operative. Our ability to see with the eyes of faith 
to hear the voice of God, to feel the gentle touch of his grace, not exteriorly, but interiorly. But our spiritual senses only operate in silence. That's their proper medium, if you will. Exterior silence is helpful, yes, but most essential is an interior silence of our spirit that speaks the language of God. Yet, even here, our Holy Mother and Holy Father, St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross, teach us that in the dark night of the spirit, God's silence can be so profound so as to not even be perceived by our spiritual senses. Even then, however, he is with us, though we perceive him not. God speaks, but the language he speaks is silence. And it is in our inner room where we commune with him. Therefore, let us persevere in prayer and contemplation, and thereby attune and dispose our hearts to him. This is where our beloved waits for us and longs to be with us. Let us go to him.